everyone, today we are here with Chris Jones and he is the Cinefest organizer and coordinator. Yeah. And he's agreed to come in today and tell us a little bit about Cinefest. Hi Chris, how are you today? I'm great, what a beautiful day. It is indeed. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection with CV Arts? Sure. Um, I have, uh, I was born in Winnipeg and I used to be able to walk to a neighborhood theater on Saturdays and pay 10 cents to watch the horse operas or uh, Marx Brothers or whatever it was. Big, beautiful theater. Uh, kids threw popcorn boxes uh, at the screen and <laughs> just had, it was like playtime. It was great. Nice. Uh, so then after Winnipeg, I moved to Montreal to study film at Loyola College, which is now part of Concordia. Uh, I have a wonderful long story to tell about a film I made about Allen Ginsberg, the American poet, but that's not appropriate right now. Um, came back uh, when I finished school and had a friend in Winnipeg and they had rented an old theater, uh, movie theater downtown Winnipeg and asked me to run it for them, uh, which I did for a few years back in the 70s. Uh, my wife saw an ad for a theater manager required at the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. Uh, they had taken a classroom and turned it into a 100% full-on movie theater. And I opened that place, it was called Place Riel Theater at the U of S. Uh, ran it for 11 years, it had a stage as well, so I had all kinds of speakers. I met, I met Leonard Nimoy, for heaven's sake. Oh, that's cool. Um, so that was a, a start of that process of, of uh, engaging with uh, humans rather than cans of film. Um, then uh, I parted ways with the university and opened an old theater in Saskatoon called the Broadway Theater, uh, which was uh, began in the very same year that I began my life, 1947. Mm -hmm. So it was a classic old theater, uh, but when we took it over, the marquee read XXX. So needless to say, there was a fair amount of work to turn this into a, a, an appropriate movie theater, <laughs> uh, shampooing all the seats and fixing dry, anyway. It was, it was a labor of love and all kinds of people joined us. Nice. Um, and, uh, the, Huge theater, 500 seats. We built a big stage uh, in front, uh, or just below the screen, and uh, started off with uh, all kinds of films. Uh, kids matinees for a dollar that we would literally have lineups around the block. And live shows, uh, I could go on and on and on about the performers that uh, I have met, uh, but we're talking about movies, so. Um, yeah, it was, uh, at the time it was called the Repertory Cinema, meaning we had a repertoire of films that we played on a semi-regular basis. Okay. Classics and, and then alternate with new titles because you're an independent theater, you're not playing Hollywood blockbusters. I got into movies really early, as you can see by the cookie tin, hmm. which is also a film can, or a film can for 35 millimeter film. And um, so yeah, uh, Broadway was fabulous and then we moved here 12 years ago. Uh, my daughter Sarah Burke and her family were already here. We'd been driving back and forth to visit finally said, let's move. Smartest thing we've done in decades. And uh, so Sarah pointed out to people at CB Arts that I had experience running movie theaters. So I became the coordinator of Cinefest in, in whatever, 12 years ago or so, 11 years ago. And I've been doing it ever since. Oh, wonderful. And I was on the board at CB Arts for a good number of years, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. And that was a fascinating experience that I have, I have left behind, no longer going to board meetings, but mm -hmm. still coordinating films for, for CB Arts and for the loyal audience that, that we built over the years. Uh, and screening right here in, in beautiful pine lines. Right. Yeah, it's fun to have fun to have the films here for sure. Um, how do you choose which movies to play? Uh, it's uh, with COVID, uh, as with everything, uh, supply chain um, broke down um, because 
theaters were closed literally around the world, mm -hmm. uh, new films uh, were not getting picked up, not getting purchased by film companies, film distributors, um, at, at a rate that they used to be. And there was uh, a segment of the Toronto International Film Festival um, called Film Circuit. And this is 190 communities across the country. And Film Circuit would work with the distributors and, and sort of ease the paperwork for us, etc., etc. It was great. Uh, it's, it's shut down. It has been shut down uh, you know, since, since the epidemic started. So, uh, we, this time we dealt with two uh, film companies that I've dealt with over the years. One, one is the great title of the company is Films We Like. And the other one is Mongrel Media, and they're both based in Toronto. And so they had new films uh, that they had been purchasing. And so we found uh, two, two films from each of them. And that's a one a month program here until April. Oh, okay. Very cool. Uh, what makes films so important to you? I, I guess because of the era I grew up in, you know, before television, um, that that was the, the, the major entertainment uh, that I received. And then when I started studying film, I was taught by, uh, Loyola was a Jesuit college, so I was taught by really knowledgeable people. My, one of my favorite uh, priests, who was also my professor, uh, was on the, the Catholic board at the Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. so he knew uh, he knew Ingmar Bergman really well and wrote two books about him and, mm -hmm. and lived with him. Anyway, fabulous, wonderful, wonderful man. So that got me interested in beyond the entertainment that uh, Hollywood was presenting and that was films from around the world. Right. And so in, in that continues because uh, in this Cinefest season we have two films from France mm -hmm. and two Canadian films. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm uh, 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 sitting in the dark with strangers, uh, the Pauline Kael's cliche is one of the most wonderful ways to experience life. <laughs> you're all watching the same thing at the mm -hmm. same time. If it's a comedy, you're all laughing your head off. If it's a, if it's a sad story, there's tears. And, and we're all experiencing that at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then we can share that experience one way or another. The, the memories that, that uh, I'm sure everyone watching can, can remember watching a, a certain film at a certain time, certain place, and that's just burned into your memory forever. Absolutely. Yeah. I have many, many, many of those. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I would see two or three movies uh, a week for probably 25 years. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. I've seen lots. Yeah. Uh, are there any movies that you are particularly excited about in the <clears throat> lineup for Cinefest this year? Yeah, sure. Um, we've, we've just seen uh, Perfumes, a film mm -hmm. from France, which, which is, I really, really enjoyed. I actually watched it twice. I don't often do that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, our, our film in February, February 5th, online and maybe in theater, is called Beans, uh, a new Canadian film made by a young indigenous woman who grew up during the Oka crisis and actually was raised in the Kahnawagi, Kahnawagi uh, Reserve, mm -hmm. just outside of Montreal, was, was there during the entire Oka crisis with guns pointed at people, etc. And she has made a film about that period of her life. And it was called Beans, it's been getting fabulous reviews mm -hmm. everywhere. Great. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. The next film uh, in March is uh, from France, mm -hmm. and it is a comedy uh, about a sort of out-of-work actor who is hired to be a um, recreation supervisor in a prison in France. And because of his background, he decides this group of gentlemen uh, should be taught how taught to read and perform the famous play Waiting for Godot. Hmm. So it's it's just it's wonderful. The cast is totally amazing. Uh, there, there's no car chases or, or, <laughs> uh, 
but it's it's really fabulous. Great. Um, and then the April film is called Portraits from a Fire, again uh, made by a young woman, Indigenous Canadian filmmaker, and I won't say much more about that because I hope we can talk about it more later. Great. Well, this is exciting. So where can everybody find the dates and extra information? Um, ColumbiaValleyArts.com uh, Go to the site. It's, it, it can be, if you haven't done this before, I think most people have it. In essence, it, you're talking to Netflix, but you're not. You're talking to CB Arts, and then we arrange with a company called Event Dive, and uh, you put your credit card in, and uh, we have put the numbers in, and you have a license then to play the film for anywhere between three and seven days. And, and we hope, uh, perhaps in February, well, we'll just see what, what happens with COVID, whether we can have screenings here in Pine Lodge. Right. Yeah, hopefully that'll happen again. Oh yes, so I'd, love to make some, I'd love to make some popcorn again. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Well, thank you so much for coming up today and sharing some time with us. We really enjoyed talking with you. Great, thanks, Kate. All the best. Thank you. Safe.